the reason why Democrats are voting for Nikki Haley, because, well, Nikki Haley is a Democrat and Nikki Haley not only is a Democrat in her policies, she's a Democrat in her policies because she's a Democrat in her donations. How it works in politics, unfortunately, is the people who donate to you, they get policies out of it, right? So when Nikki Haley is advocating for forever war, when Nikki Haley is indistinguishable from Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden in what she represents and what she wants to do to this country, when Nikki Haley cries about racial hoaxes and cries about you uh, calling criminal illegal aliens criminals, um, the reason she's doing that is not because Nikki Haley actually believes anything. That would take a moral backbone and some type of like intellectual honesty. She didn't have any of those things. Nikki Haley says and does those things because her dem- her donors are, in fact, Democrats. Not only that, her, her, her Democrat donors are the ones who are currently actively funding lawsuits against Donald Trump. Well, that seems like a pretty damn egregious and despicable conflict of interest, but let me introduce you to a man named Reed Hoffman. Nikki Haley, one of her biggest donors, is a man named Reed Hoffman. Who is Reed Hoffman? Top Democrat donor Reed Hoffman gives $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars, to Nikki Haley's super PAC. Mr. Hoffman is the co-founder of LinkedIn. He's funded an array of anti-Trump candidates. But what he's really funding, ladies and gentlemen, is the destruction of Donald Trump through Nikki Haley. And Nikki Haley's thrilled about it. She's thrilled about it. In fact, as this article goes on to note, Nikki Haley is almost exclusively funded by Democrat billionaires. These are big time Biden backers who are funding also Trump's newest trial or his ongoing trial that you're hearing in the news right now. Gene E. Carroll, backed by known Democrat Party activist, mega donor Reed Hoffman, who backs Haley. Well, isn't that a little convenient for Nikki. Luckily for us, we don't have to look really hard to find how Nikki Haley is almost exclusively supported by Democrats. They straight up admit it on national television. Here's one of Nikki Haley's big bundlers going on Fox News saying the thing you're, uh, huh, I think this is his last Fox News hit on behalf of the Haley camp. He's like, we held a, a, don- a donation for Nikki Haley and only Democrats donated. Isn't that great? Co. She had raised in the quarter before that. So the money train is still flowing and going. Um, are you worried, though? Thank you, Neil, for having me and Happy New Year. I New didn't. Well. Uh, we actually have a large um, fundraiser on the 30th of January at a major apartment in uh, New York City where we're raising a tremendous amount of money. Believe it or not, a number of it coming from uh, Democrats. <laughs> um, we, uh, we actually have a lot of money for Nikki Haley, and it's all Democrats. <gasps> Wait, oh, I'm not going to say that. Bye, Neil. <laughs> it's, just, it's so humiliating. It's utterly degrading. Nikki Haley thinks she's going to be Donald Trump's vice president. The man who I believe most likely will be Donald Trump's vice president was up on his show hours after the Iowa caucus results with one glaring warning. Tucker Carlson talking about how the game has been rigged in order to get Nikki Haley into that office, how Democrats have blown their chances with Biden, blown their chances with Kamala, and are now making their move, backing Nikki Haley with an unlimited amount of money, with an unlimited amount of Democrat support, in order to ensure that they simply get their policies in the White House. They don't care about party. They don't care about patriotism. They certainly don't care about this country. This place is a shell company. It's an LLC. This is a shell company for them. This is a pass-through entity, America. It's not a land where like you were born and your kids have a right to because your ancestors fought and died here. No, 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 no. So they, don't, they, they have no allegiances. Nikki Haley is simply a vessel for their globalist worldview. 
that often ends in the that will end in the destruction of this country. Tucker Carlson, take it away. Now, much of Haley's money comes not from Republicans or conservatives, but from committed Democratic partisans. Anti-civilization activist Reid Hoffman, for example, is a major Haley supporter. Reid Hoffman is the founder of LinkedIn. He's a friend of Jeffrey Epstein's. He was a visitor to Pedo Island, in fact. He's also the guy who funded E. Jean Carroll's sexual assault case against Donald Trump. Reid Hoffman is a Democratic mega donor. In 2020, he gave a million dollars to David Brock's American Bridge Pack. That's a group designed to physically harass Republican candidates. Hoffman's money has also helped to prop up the authoritarian governor of California, Gavin Newsom, as well as many others on approximately the same team. So you know exactly who he is. What's interesting is this cycle, Reid Hoffman is all in on Nikki Haley. His cash is paid for one of the most shameless propaganda operations in memory. So the very same people who told you four years ago that Joe Biden was a jovial, moderate grandfather is trying to return America to normal. Those same people are now trying to sell Nikki Haley as a conservative woman of principle. Nikki Haley is a plant. She is exclusively funded by Democrats, but as we know, money doesn't necessarily buy you victories. You can get Democrat funding. You can get dollars from some of the worst people on earth. It doesn't mean victory. It doesn't equate to victory. A good example of this was a very well-funded and well-advocated for mayoral candidate in Houston that had Hillary Clinton flying in to do campaigns for her and so forth. Her name is Sheila Jackson Lee. She's an absolute darling of the psychotic left. She lost. She went down in flames. I mean, she she didn't even crack 20%. She had every, every dark money group, everything behind her. Again, Hillary Clinton, Nikki Haley's favorite person, inspiration. They were flying in, didn't help, didn't help her win, right? You actually do need voters. The unfortunate thing is that no matter what, 2016, of course, proves this, where, where 2016, there's no doubt in my mind that Nikki Haley was crying on election night. Don't you believe that? That Nikki Haley, like, was the one, like, screaming, no, like, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley would have loved to have served in the Hillary Clinton administration. She was able to weasel her way into a no-show job in the Trump administration. Uh, but I digress. You still need the voters to show up for you. We, you, you prove that time and time again. And so Nikki Haley did come in third in the Iowa caucuses, a distant, distant, embarrassing third. And how did she do that? Well, with Democrat support. So it's one thing to talk about her policies and then to talk about her donors. There's a totally different level of traitorism to look at and drill down on who's supporting Nikki Haley. Who are the people that are actually showing up to cast their ballots for her? And fascinatingly enough, there was a county, one, that Donald Trump didn't win in Iowa. A single county by a single vote. We can show you. It's a county I'm very familiar with because I went to school in this county. I went to the University of Iowa that is located in Johnson County, Iowa. It is stacked. The only the only county in Iowa that you can find a Marxist in, right? These dirty, dusty old professors, they smell like old moldy cheese. They're despicable people. They're full of, their shoulders are full of dandruff. Their teeth are yellow. And they're, they're just your typical big university barnacle Marxist. And it turns out that Nikki Haley won this county by a single vote. Now, how did she do that? Nikki Haley won this county by a single vote because Democrats showed up to vote for her. In fact, Democrats, so many Democrats showed up to vote for Nikki Haley that they broke the election process as demonstrated by a report by CBS News. Watch. Uh, Major, it's been a very interesting night. They just finished uh, voting. This was a room in favor of Nikki Haley, overwhelmingly so, Ron DeSantis second, Donald Trump, a distant third, the most interesting development of the evening. And Anthony Salvato will, will find this to be very interesting indeed. They had 50 forms for people who wanted to register tonight or switch their party registration. They ran out of those forms. Members of the caucus team here had to run out to multiple people's homes to get printer paper and get their printers fired up. 
They printed another 25 or so sheets of paper. They estimate about 75 people were new registrations or switch their registration from Democrat to Republican in order to play in this caucus tonight. And I think that's a big reason why Nikki Haley uh, was lifted up. You're getting a little noise here as they clean up. Uh, was so uh, impressive in this particular outing. If she can repeat that, because we're talking about 20 percent of the vote here, thereabouts, give or take, uh, were new registrations or crossovers. And that is above the typical rate. You see estimates about 10 percent in a typical open caucus. So if she can outperform in counties like this one, at caucus sites like this one, then that bodes well for her ability to have a strong second, which, of course, is what her campaign really wants to drive the narrative into New Hampshire. I'm not one to show you corporate media clips and be like, they're right, they're 100% right, they're truthful. We always take this stuff with a grain of salt, but I have no reason to doubt that report. That man sat, that reporter sat there all night and watched the people vote and look, look at the tally. Nikki Haley won that single county, that one county, the one county Donald Trump didn't win, is the county with the most liberals in all of Iowa. And all those liberals switched parties to vote for Nikki Haley. Not only is it proof positive in the actual results of the Iowa caucus, as you can see there, that Democrats exclusive, that Democrat voters are the only reason that Nikki Haley uh, can even come close to winning a campaign, but it's also proven out in the polling and the actual data. The polling here, according to NBC News, is that half of Nikki Haley's backers said that they'd vote for Joe Biden instead of Trump. This data is far more alarming than like a, a single county situation. This is where you really have your problems, okay? One county can be, one county out of 99 can be like, you know, you have cra crazy land, right? Johnson County is cra crazy county in Iowa, right? A lot of, a lot of unhinged Marxists there, right? They'll, they'll do anything to stop Born Hitler. This is the actual devastating poll. Scroll down in the article, please. You see that there is a small contingency of overall Iowa GOP caucus primary voters that would potentially back Biden over Trump in a general. You're always going to get a little bit of crossover in each party. There's Democrats who vote for Trump. There's Republicans who vote for Biden. Okay. There's, you know, there's all, all stripes, right? But among Nikki Haley supporters broken out down there, can you hover over the blue part, please, of that poll? Among Nikki Haley supporters, Nearly 50% say that they'll vote for Joe Biden over Donald Trump. So ask yourself the question, are these Republicans? Of course they're not. These are Democrats. 50% of Republicans aren't going to vote for Biden over Trump. Are you insane? What planet do you live on? Donald Trump's been calling this out for quite a while. Ron DeSantis has been pretty savage to Nikki Haley on stage. No fan of the way that Ron DeSantis has run his presidential campaign. Think he should drop out. But there's one person who's really gone, like a um, kamikaze at Nikki Haley. And it's Vivek. And he got a chance to do it in a way that Trump didn't because Trump did not do the debates. But Vivek did. Vivek at the debates was a absolute suicide bomber <laughs> to Nikki. To Nikki I mean, he went hard, hard at Nikki and told the truth. Actually, Nikki Haley is corrupt. Preach this to the left, but it's even worse when Republicans try to play the same game. We're talking about that trans issue in Nikki Haley's campaign launch video sounded like a woke Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light ad talking about how she would kick in heels. At the first debate, she said that only a woman can get this job done. That's what she said. After the third debate, when I criticized Ronna McDaniel after five failed years of leadership of this party and criticized Nikki for her corrupt foreign dealings as a military contractor, she said that I have a woman problem. Nikki, I don't have a woman problem. You have a corruption problem. And I think that that's what people need to know. Nikki is corrupt. This is a woman who will send your kids to die so she can buy a bigger house. This is the problem, using identity politics more effectively than Kamala Harris is a form of intellectual fraud. And it actually needs to end. There's our donor puppet masters wielding their puppet right up here tonight. This is how this game is played. The puppet masters put up their puppet, and I reject the use of identity politics in this party. It has been a cancer coming from the left, and I'm sick and tired of the double standards the people of this country are too. Having two X chromosomes does not immunize okay, you from thank criticism. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Governor Hayes. 
Well done, good and faithful servant. Is there a less popular Republican in the Republican Party than Dick Cheney? Would you want to go out to dinner at Dick Cheney's house? Would you want to go hunting with Dick Cheney? Would you want to do anything with Dick Cheney? Dick Cheney's daughter lost in a landslide in his home state of Wyoming with a little endorsement video from Dick Cheney. Under the same guise, by the way. I mean, it's important to note that Dick Cheney and his daughter asked Democrats to switch parties to vote for Liz Cheney. It's the same thing. It's the same play. These people have no allegiances. They have no souls, no morals. Vivek Ramaswamy called Nikki Haley Dick Cheney in heels. Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, got a $5 million bribe from Ukraine. That's why we're sending $200 billion back to that same country. The fact of the matter is the Republican Party is not that much better. You have the likes of Nikki Haley, who stepped down from her time at the UN. Bankrupt or in debt is, was her family. Then she becomes a military contractor. She joins the board of Boeing and otherwise, and is now a multimillionaire. So I think that that's wrong when Republicans do it or Democrats do it. That's the choice we face. Do you want a leader from a different generation who's gonna put this country first, or do you want Dick Cheney in three inch heels? All right, Mr. In which case we've got two of them on stage Mr. tonight. Ramaswamy, thank you. <laughs> which case we've got two of them on stage tonight. <laughs> Just points at, points at Ron DeSantis. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's so good. The thing about it, the neocon is that the neocon is there to serve their masters. And their masters are always the permanent state which engorges itself and enriches itself like a parasite, parasitic tick on the back of our American politique through forever war. It's why George Washington in his farewell address warned about forever war. It's why Dwight Eisenhower warned about the military industrial complex. These guys were brilliant generals. If there's anyone who you, know, you should really trust, it should be Washington and Eisenhower, the two greatest generals to ever live in our American military history. And those two guys were warning against the forever war complex that Nikki Haley represents. And what is the trait of that complex? To begin and start new wars, to send our American sons and daughters to the slaughter, to the meat grinder, so that Nikki Haley can buy a bigger house. Does Nikki Haley even know where she wishes to send our American treasure and our American lives? Can she even name the regions in Ukraine that she wishes to take back from Vladimir? Let's ask. Foreign policy experience is not the same as foreign policy wisdom. I want everybody at home to know that I was the first person to say we need a reasonable peace deal in Ukraine. Now a lot of the neocons are quietly coming along to that position with the exceptions of Nikki Haley and Joe Biden who still support this, what I believe is pointless war in Ukraine. And I think those with foreign policy experience, one thing that Joe Biden and Nikki Haley have in common is that neither of them could even state for you three provinces in eastern Ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for. Look at that. This is what I want people to understand. These people have, I mean, she has no idea what the hell the names of those provinces are, but she wants to send our sons and daughters and our troops and our military equipment to go fight it. So reject this myth that they've been selling you, that somebody had a cup of coffee stint at the UN and then makes eight million bucks after, has real foreign policy experience. It takes an outsider to see this through. Look at the blank expression. She doesn't know the names of the provinces that she wants to actually fight for. And there's a puppet manager right there. The donors, the donors right there that are playing about the puppet okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Enough, enough. Wouldn't it be nice to have like an actual debate? moderated by people who you care, who you like follow and care about and trust their opinions. Wouldn't that be nice? This is why when we were doing some debate prep with Vivek, I said, announce on the debate page that Tucker Carlson should host a debate. Why hasn't Tucker Carlson ever hosted a debate? Are, are we stupid? Like what happened to us? Our balls fall off? Like why don't we have Tucker Carlson host a debate? Why don't we have Bongino host a debate? Why don't we have Elon Musk host a debate for God's sake? I don't care. Like anyone who has like a little bit of credit with like the, with, with the, our base asking questions that we like to talk about at the gas station or at the breakfast table or at the bar or at the pub, like, wouldn't it be nice to have that? Instead, you get moderators cutting off the vague when he's asking these devastating questions and they are devastating. We're building that ecosystem.
Mark my words, we won't have debates like this in the future. I see the future. We will not be having debates like this in the future. You know who will be moderating the debates of the future? With the path that's going? Where we're heading? And this is not like a pat on the back, but where we're heading? Like where the actual core of the movement and the energy of the movement is going are people who are actually grinding and showing up and delivering every single day and working to, to gain audience. And for that, I, I humbly say thank you. We're putting in the work and we're building and we're spending uh, in order like to ensure that we can reach you and we can reach different generations of people with these messages. But if Nikki Haley got her way, we wouldn't be able to. Isn't that wild? We wouldn't be able to because Nikki Haley would make you register with the government to use the internet. And Vivek called her out on it. It's a thing of beauty. Marching towards fascism under Biden, Jack Smith has subpoenaed <clears throat> every last retweet that someone has issued from Donald Trump in the year 2020. The only person more fascist than the Biden regime now is Nikki Haley, who thinks the government should identify every one of those individuals with an ID. That is not freedom. That is fascism. And she should come nowhere near the levers of power, let alone the White House. I, I got that is completely correct. The one thing that could take away Tucker Carlson's new company, right? The one thing that could take away the energy that we're building online with your favorite creators, and the people that, fo that, that that you follow, that you uh, get information from, the people that you like bring you uplifting every single day, is Nikki Haley's policy that all of us must get a license from the government to use the internet. That is fascistic. That's what they have in China. Of course, Nikki Haley's donors would love for America to become their own version of China where they controlled everything in a kleptocracy. A man standing against that is, of course, Donald Trump, who has now decided to go hard in on Nikki Haley in New Hampshire. Here's Donald Trump from last night. A vote for Nikki Haley this Tuesday is a vote for Joe Biden and a Democrat Congress this November, because that's what's going to happen. You can't do it. In Iowa, nearly 50 percent of Haley voters said they plan to vote for Biden in November. Now, that means that she's like a Democrat. That means she's a Democrat. And we just showed you that polling. It was the NBC News poll. It's right here. Donald Trump not making this up. Much like with the meme. Much like with the meme of Nikki Haley as Hillary Clinton face swap. Not making it up. It's at, it, This is real. This is real. There's a lot of memes that are just there for fun. There's a lot of memes that are there for the chuckle. This is legitimately real. Nikki Haley is Hillary Clinton. She is advised by Hillary Clinton's donors. She has Hillary Clinton's policies. And... She looks up to Hillary. She falls for the same hoaxes, and she wishes to push the same authoritarianism on you. She's just doing it in the name of the Republican Party, which is really, truly, truly terrifying. As Donald Trump said last night, she is an infiltrator. Watch. Nikki Haley is counting on Democrats and liberals to infiltrate your Republican primary. By the way, what's that all about? What is it all about? Well, it's clear. They know that they can't win with Biden and Kamala. By their own designs, they have painted themselves into the corner with the most unpopular, degenerate, humiliating, cringeworthy administration that can't defend itself or anyone else. And they can't win. And they know they can't win. And so they must, like a parasite, move to the body that has still something to offer, that still has some warmth to it, the Republican Party. And so they'll run someone inside the Republican Party. These people don't have any allegiance. They have no loyalty. They have no souls. They don't care if it's a Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter. It's just their policy. They're the policies. It is irrelevant. And something struck me last night. Something struck me last night. Donald Trump's, uh, uh, Donald Trump has modeled so much of his campaign and policies off of Ronald Reagan. Even the slogan, Make America Great Again, was a Reagan slogan. We put up the poster yesterday. A Reagan slogan from 1980. Let's make America great again. Ronald Reagan. Whew, that sounds familiar. But what did the super state, deep state Democrats, what did these people do to Reagan? Well, Reagan had a very successful presidency, okay, on many fronts. Made some horrible decisions also on some fronts was moderated by the left on many fronts. And I would argue that Ronald Reagan 
had his compass twisted by George H.W. Bush. And when George H.W. Bush was able to seize power after Ronald Reagan, the Manchurian candidate, George H.W. Bush, governed as a Democrat, increased taxes, started new wars for no reason, for literally no reason, uh, amnesty, all manner of like increasing welfare and the super state and deep state funding. George H.W. Bush is a Democrat, is a Democrat, ran as a parasite inside of the Reagan administration in order to seize power, used the Reagan revolution as a springboard power because nobody would ever vote for George H.W. Bush as a man. In fact, George H.W. Bush lost the Iowa caucuses as vice president in 1988, like in a landslide to Bob Dole. They're going to try and do the same thing with Nikki. So if they can't take Trump out legally or electorally, they're going to run her as vice president. They're going to push her to be vice president. And who do we turn to in times like this? Well, the man who should, I think, arguably be Donald Trump's vice president, Tucker Carlson, asked what he would do if Nikki Haley was chosen as vice president and um, wasn't pretty. Would you vote for Trump if he chose Nikki as VP? And I would you guys vote no? for Trump? Well, I mean, that's the question that I asked you specifically. Well, I, right. I, I, I would not only not vote for that ticket, I would, I would advocate against it as strongly as I could. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I well, that, that's, I, just, I, that's just poison. I mean, here's someone who's actively opposed to the interests of the country I grew up in, who endorsed the BLM riots, and who is not, only, is, is not left, but is neoliberal in the darkest, most, speaking of nihilist, nihilistic mm -hmm. way. And has no real popular support. Is like a, is a creature of the oligarchs. So yeah, that would be that would be reason to oppose the ticket. Even Trump, Haley is a no go. Nikki Haley. He would get assassinated immediately if that were the case. Yeah, I, and by the way, I just yeah, can't yeah. imagine a world where that could happen. That would be so crazy. I mean, well, I mean anything could happen, of course. But picking Nikki Haley, um, who's utterly treacherous, and utterly dismissive Christy, no? of, like the interests of Americans. Yeah, it's a no go for me, uh, but it's a yes for BlackRock. You have a bad you have a bad thing on your hands when Tucker Carlson doesn't just not like you. There's plenty of Republicans Tucker Carlson doesn't like, obviously, but you have a real problem if Tucker Carlson doesn't just not like you, but he's willing to march against you. Tucker Carlson saying he'd lead the revolution against Nikki Haley as Trump's VP. <gasps> Hot damn.